Welcome to going green. Taking plastic waste like this, or this, and turning it into a prosthetic leg like this. That's the goal of Project Cirque Leg, which wants to develop a low-cost and sustainable solution for amputees in developing countries. Simon Oswald is uh, the co-founder and is here to discuss the growing trend for social enterprises in Switzerland and the challenges they face to find funding. Also here is Emme van der Wolde. She is the project lead at SAIF. It helps businesses which aim to solve social and environmental problems. Welcome to you both. Emme, let me start with you. So the startup industry in Switzerland is very active. Do we know approximately how many social enterprises there are? Well, the social enterprises are a little bit hidden into the normal startup world. Um, as you said, the startup world is really growing here in Switzerland. And we um, do estimate that around 30% um, is impact driven, a social startup. Um, unfortunately, I don't know. I don't have any hard numbers on that. I recently conducted a small research and um, we hope to find some research money to uh, do a more in-depth research uh, around the topic of social enterprises in Switzerland. So what defines actually a social enterprise and uh, what are some of the key elements there? Yeah, the key elements of a social enterprise is to do um, doing uh, good and doing business, meaning they have both a social value and a financial value. Uh, but the whole uh, existence, uh, the whole purpose is to uh, solve a problem um, in the social impact or environmental impact uh, a field and uh, alongside having a financial revenue. Simon, at Project Circleg, you produce uh, these uh, prosthetic legs using plastic for amputees in developing countries. What sets you apart? So we're producing a modular prosthetic leg system and it's affordable, that's the first point, and it offers high functionality and for simplifying the life of amputees there. Now, you are saying that this is an affordable solution, but what makes you believe that you can actually be successful? There are um, more points to that. So first of all, it's modular, that means parts can be replaced and repaired. Then it's made up out of recycled plastic waste, and that makes up to 50% uh, lower material costs, and it's produced locally in the country of impact. Amy, there are so many interesting ideas out there, right? So how do you actually select the uh, social enterprises? What is uh, your selection criteria? Oh, our selection criteria, um, what you said, there are a lot of uh, good ideas, and there are also a lot of uh, incubation programs here in Switzerland. Um, we are more focusing on the next step. So uh, businesses who want to grow and scale um, and want to sustain their uh, social impact. And our main, um, our main point is that you have to be impact driven. So it's really impact first and then profit. And research and development is really crucial. So Simon, tell us a little bit what kind of objects uh, you use and what kind of products for the prosthetic legs. Yes, so exactly. It's, uh, the prosthetic leg is a very complex product and we have had to develop uh, a lot of prototypes to, in order to get the function we want, we needed. And this is how we made it, very simple basic models that we could test the functions on how it's bending, how the foot overall is. So for example, we also developed a foot joint which allows a squatting position and therefore also the use of a squat toilet. And this is a very important aspect in many less developed countries. That is uh, one object you use. Uh, do you need others as well? Yes, so um, after this very simple prototype, uh, we made a step further and produced a 3D printed uh, foot, which helped us to, to really control the function and see where it's going. And for this, uh, we also used uh, material tests. And for, to produce this, we need rig granulate of polypropylene. And this we inject by injection molding into the material we use and this is added with glass fibers. So pretty basic uh, products that uh, you need. As part of this process, you also went to Kenya. Tell me how this helped in your development. This trip was very crucial for us because we really believe that the product only can be developed with the insights of the users 
And therefore we went to Kenya and asked the people there, what are your experience? What is, what is that you need for, for your daily life? And together with them, we developed the product really. So MA research and development is obviously very, very important. How do you at SAIF help these also with regards uh, to funding? Yes, uh, for social startups, it's really important to find uh, investing and funding opportunities. And that's not an easy part here in Switzerland. Um, what we do is namely, uh, mainly uh, capacity building, uh, meaning we have different kinds of programs, a coaching program, uh, we offer courses, training, uh, we also do consulting on impact measurement and management. And this is all with the aim to get social startup invest ready, uh, because it differs a little bit from normal startups. As a social startup, you have to deal with your uh, impact measurement and management, you have beneficiaries, not only your paying customers, and also the money, you, uh, it's somewhere else. And why is it so challenging to find funding in Switzerland? Because you help these uh, enterprises yeah. in the first round of funding. There are so many business angel clubs and uh, impact investors in Switzerland. Why? I think because there is not a lot of awareness yet. Um, th the understanding of impact investing, the opportunity to uh, invest in social impact and also have a financial return. Um, and um, it's hard because the tickets are a little bit smaller of social enterprises. So you have to uh, find an investor who is willing to uh, and planning uh, an investment in a social venture. Simon, where do you stand at this point in terms of fundraising and getting investment? So we're exactly in the first financing round and we wanted to go to uh, foundations and not to investors because we want to kind of stay independent in the first uh, time and we got already funding from the IKEA Foundation Switzerland so we're really happy about that and we're looking for uh, investors in the second round of our financing. And which are some of the main challenges that you are confronting at this point? For us it's really the business model that it's uh, challenging because as Emma said before we have beneficiaries and we have users and, and people who um, make it possible. And so for us, the customers is not the user, it's NGOs that enable um, the people a prosthetic leg. What is your outlook a little bit for this year, Amy, in terms of getting investors to invest in social enterprises? Do you see the landscape change and adapt a little bit to really buy into these uh, new business models? Um, we see a, a huge potential in uh, especially tech for impact um, startups um, because they have a big potential of uh, worldwide scalable social impact alongside a financial revenue. Um, so that would be interesting opportunities for investors. Um, so we would like to focus a little bit more on that. Um, we are developing at the moment an accelerator and um, we are also developing a new uh, financing tool to provide more opportunities for these social startups. Now, SAIF also runs Impact Awards and the theme of 2019 is tech. Tell me more about the goals and the aspirations. Um, they raise awareness um, and they are for startups in uh, Europe. The operation can be based everywhere um, and you can win a, a prize uh, of 10,000 Swiss francs as a seed money prize. And uh, the partnership is with UBS and PwC for these uh, impact awards. Is this a sign that the you know, landscape is becoming more mainstream maybe for social enterprises? I hope so. Uh, UBS and PwC are uh, partners also in our Impact Academy. Um, we uh, do collaborate a lot with big corporates and we do see a, a growing interest, uh, especially in social enterprises. And that's good. What kind of startups are you now planning to support the most? Is it uh, the tech companies or do you open your horizon a little bit as well? Um, we open our horizon. Um, we have a few programs running for uh, everyone, so to say, for all impact driven startups and a few programs for um, tech startups. And so uh, how does Switzerland compare to other European countries? And are you only looking at the Swiss landscape? Um, no, we're also looking at the uh, Europe landscape. Um, I would say that Switzerland is a little bit behind around the social uh, startup scene. 
Um, but it's growing and, um, and of course Switzerland is uh, uh, the main capital of Europe, so uh, main tech capital of Europe. So there is still a big potential for these impact driven startups. And I, I've noticed that the rest of Europe is looking at Switzerland. So what is your long term goal? Where do you hope to be in five to ten years time? So at a high production level? Absolutely. So in five years time we want to have set up uh, a production in Kenya and Uganda. And maybe in 10 years time, who knows, we can scale the business and go to other countries like uh, Indonesia or Cambodia. Tell us more about uh, your business model that you have for the long term. So our goal is to set up a local business model. That means that we are going to sell our product to local NGOs that already have a distribution network. And then in a the long term vision, we also could think of a mobile hub that tours through the country um, with an orthopedic workshop on it in order to really um, go to the people and that they have the solution right available there. So if you plan to start in Kenya and then maybe roll it out into the wider East African region, how would you employ the local staff, local employees and get everybody on board? So we're already um, trying to work with partners there. So we have a partner in recycling and a partner in production. And of course, they have to um, build up a new team as well for this pr produ production of the Circlec. So I think they are going to hire as well local people. And this will be, have a great benefit for the uh, local um, society. In terms of consulting, is this something that you would look into as well, Amy? I think um, we don't have everything in-house to be to consulting. We mainly are consulting on impact measurement and management. But in our programs, um, for example, in the Impact Academy, you can be matched with a senior a director from a big corporate to get the advice you need and the support you need. According to a startup ticket, Amy, the uh, investment in Swiss startups, uh, the amount has almost tripled in five years to around 1 billion Swiss francs. It's a huge number, but do you think it actually goes to the right people and the right social enterprises? Mm, that's a difficult question. I don't have the numbers on that, or I can, I, but I hope that it's also shifting to uh, impact investing. Um, so that investors understand that it still can be interesting and that you can still have a financial uh, return uh, and investing in uh, impact. So impact investing obviously is having a social, environmental governance impact, doing the good but still get financial returns. How does this measure, how does this balance out at uh, uh, Circle Egg? What is more important? Can you say or is it really 50-50? I think uh, the impact is still more important, but uh, we really believe that for sustainability reasons, it's important to be profitable. And therefore, I think it's maybe it's 60-40. Uh, if there was better infrastructure, would you think that more young people and university graduates would also dare, you know, and come forward with their ideas and launch their own uh, social startup? Um, I think so, and I hope so. As um, Simon said, um, they are starting their business and they are designers. But it's also um, you also have to understand what is what 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 kind of business model you have to have. Um, how where and where and how do I find my investors? What are term sheets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, also, social startup needs that information and support. Um, so yeah, it would be nice if there is more infrastructure and more support for them. Simon, you studied design. Were you not tempted and attracted to go a more profitable route and work for a big company? No, absolutely not. I think it's really interesting to uh, set up the own business because you learn really a lot. You learn on um, design level, you learn on a societal level and you, you grow as a person as well. Motivation must be so crucial with all of your clients or uh, social enterprises that you're working with, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it's so inspiring to work uh, with these social enterprises because they are also uh, impact driven. They have a lot of purpose in life and are willing to doing good and not going for the easy money, so to say. And what we also see is that we, like I said, we collaborate with a lot of corporates. And they really want to know more about this whole social startup field because they feel inspired as well. 
Simon, you're still at a uh, testing and you know trial period stage at this point. Who are you now collaborating with to fully take off? So there are different play fields here in Switzerland. We want to collaborate with ETH. We're in discussion to develop the product further there and also ZHW. And in the countries of impact, for example, in Kenya, we want to work with NGOs, which can help us to develop the product and the service further. Now, this is uh, still a prototype, but you want it to become a medical device. So a lot of testing is uh, still needed, isn't it? Absolutely. And there's testing needed for the product itself, but also testing in the field. So people who wear it and which the da daily activities, we can then test the product really. Thank you both so much for joining us and good luck for the uh, social enterprises and all the impact projects that you're having this year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.